Montrealer this week is a man who came to this city with a plan to end his life. Instead, he found a new purpose. Alvin Powell played three and a half seasons in the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks and the Miami Dolphins. His career came crashing down when he became addicted to crack cocaine. He came to Montreal to escape the shame south of the border and with an idea to commit suicide. Instead, he got clean and then he was hired as a drug counselor. Since 2004, he has run the Saving Station Foundation, which offers advice to kids and parents on staying off drugs. I completely destroyed my NFL career uh, because of drugs, and I was just totally out of control. Totally humiliated my family, myself, my team, the community, and you know, as you know, and you know, when you're a pro athlete and you're in the media, you know, everybody knows about it, the whole entire country. So I figured I'd come to Canada to put an end to my my uh, life. That's was that was your plan when you. That came was my in. motivating factor. Really? Yeah. So what happened? Well, the man upstairs had other plans, and uh, so I recovered in April the eighth, nineteen ninety three, to be precise. Um, it was a struggle because I was in a foreign country, uh, just trying to survive. I had no government assistance or anything like that. I didn't know anyone. And so it was uh, just a, a struggle. I lived on the very streets of Montreal. I would break into laundry rooms. I would steal. I would do whatever I had to do to survive. Um, I knew that I could not go back to the States. I was too humiliated. And, and I'd burnt all my bridges. You know, no one wanted anything to do with me. And so, uh, you know, I just figured I'd, you know, once I got off the drugs, I'd have to do what I had to do to uh, to survive. That's you, what I did. You were living on the streets while you were trying to recover? Absolutely. Um, I came into uh, recovery. My sponsor actually, uh, he was in early recovery. He actually took the uh, mattress off of the bed and put it on the floor. And I slept on the mattress and he slept on the box spring. Mm. And it was roach infested, mice infested place right off the carry there. And uh, this was the this was the beginning. It was a very humbling experience. I had to take that university degree and all that wisdom that I'd gained and put it right in my back pocket. Wash cars. I did everything you could imagine to earn money. But on my road to recovery, it became very um, evident to me that I was a very selfish and self-centered prick, and that I was a father of children, and they needed their dad. And that was the motivating factor for me that, you know, that I had to, you know, suck it up and do what you had to do. It's not these children's fault that you brought into this world. And, and, uh, and that was it. That was the driving force for me was my children. It's incredible. You tell your story so bluntly and so well, I have to say, and you've brought it into school. So tell me the reaction from kids in schools when you go in there and tell this story. Kids appreciate the truth. Uh, we are living in a society today where it's a, just a whole different breed of children and, and, and parents need to get this. Uh, I mean, these kids are way more intelligent than we ever could be. They're stupid as hell sometimes too. <laughs> they make, they make uh, interesting yeah, choices, well, right? Or bad well, choices. They are able to get information that we never had access to mm. and that empowers them. And they're too immature to handle all this information. And so therefore, they're way ahead of us uh, on, on, on the, the intelligence scale. But in terms of just moral decisions and, and things um, that are ethically right and wrong, they just seem to not be there. They're really hard kids. They, they don't have the sensitivity that we have. Mm -hmm. And I give an experiment when I go to schools. You know, I've done this. I mean, remember about six, seven years ago, there was a beheading of, an, a, re, of a, a reporter overseas. And I, and I asked, I, you know, in an auditorium full of about a thousand kids, I said, those of you kids who watch this beheading on a computer, can you please stand to your feet? About 95% of the kids in the auditorium stood to their feet. Now the teachers and, uh, and the educators were aligned against the wall. And I said, of you, uh, you know, educators and teachers, I want you to take one step forward um, if you actually watch this video, and only two step forward. And it was a clear indication of the differences between, you know, the generations in terms of that uh, sensitivity. 
uh, these kids are very hardline kids. You got to come with them with a very hardline message, or you just you're gonna lose them. They're not gonna hear you. And so I just tell them the truth. I don't sugarcoat anything. I tell them just the way it is. I let them know exactly how it is out there. But more importantly, I take the time to educate them on progression. This is how it's gonna try to trap you. These are the things you need to look for while you're using. If you're exhibiting these behaviors, you need to check yourself because only you can control you. Your parents can lock you up, they can beat you, they can discipline you. But if it's in your mind to use drugs, you're going to use drugs. And you are only hurting you understand that our job as parents and educators are one and the same is to prepare you from a human being that's very dependent on his parents to an independent human being who becomes then self-sufficient so to not prepare you for the you know for this world out there is to fail you to allow you to come in when you want to speak back and all these things that we we implement discipline for consequences boundaries um, is to fail our children mm -hmm. and so when I teach about drugs I make sure that I get the progression in there I make sure that they and I leave them with resources because we're never going to be there Jamie never when they have to make that decision to pick up or not pick up mm -hmm. we're never going to be there and so it's important that whatever I say to these kids I'm saying it with such a force that will impact them in that moment when they're with their friends. Incredible guy. For more information or if you need help, log on to the website Saving Station Foundation. That's how you can get in touch with Alvin.